England is all abuzz about a new television show called The Good Sex Guide. It's a show designed as a self-help aid to teach what doesn't always come naturally. Some say it's informative, others call it a national scandal. Meanwhile, the host says action speaks louder than words. Here's today's inside story. We all want to please our partners and be good in bed. The Good Sex Guide is a unique and provocative television show that's taking Great Britain by storm. What the hell? Detective Inspector Dexter. Orgasm squad. One of the early episodes dealt with women being left unsatisfied. Another dealt with working out your inhibitions. A third concerned itself with the value of learning non-traditional love-making positions. Is this your leg, Mr. Ola? Ah! Oh, no, obviously not. Along with this hilarious sex education, host Marky Clark keeps the show moving with over-the-top monologues and introductions to wacky sketches. Are you offering to act out my sexual fancy? As long as it doesn't involve pain, my sister or livestock. Clark says if the presentation's a hoot, so much the better. It's no more than what Dr. Ruth would have done. You know, I'm just a sexier version of Dr. Ruth. Margie Clark was born and raised here in Liverpool, England, where the ferry does cross the Mersey. And while her film career has made her popular all over England, here she is just another scouser, as all Liverpudlians are called. And if she stops by for a taste at Yates Wine Lodge, she can easily become one of the boys. It's been a hard day's night. And I'll be working like a dog. It is this kind of zany spontaneity that gives the Good Sex Guide its identity. What can you do if you can't bend over backwards to please your partner? There is a real doctor to analyze sexual behavior and lots of ordinary citizens sharing good and bad sexual experiences. But it's unexpected stunts like a visit by Margie to a men's locker room during a show about male private parts that have grabbed the astounding ratings. I particularly like that sequence in the shower. And um, when they told me, oh, you know, it's going to be eight men in the shower, and I said, ooh, will they all be gorgeous? And they went, yeah. Well, they couldn't find any men. And they got eight men from a nudist colony around the corner from where we were filming. Even with all the fun and games, the good sex guide has become controversial in England because of its liberal use of nudity, female and male, and wild comments from ordinary citizens. At Cracks, a Liverpool pub once favored by John Lennon and the Beatles, everyone knows about Margie and the guide. I thought it was quite good what I saw. Quite embarrassing. <laughs> it's quite funny and informative. Well, I switched it on, thought it looked cheap and nasty and switched it off again. Others think the Good Sex Guide is neither good television nor good education. Conservative social critic and former teacher Mary Whitehouse says the guide is demeaning to the sex act. To see it turned into, you know, a thoroughly titillating, gratuitous exercise in pornography, because that's what this lot is, uh, is very, uh, I think, very disturbing. Hello? Ground control to Major Tom? Naturally, Margie Clark dismisses all this kind of criticism with a laugh. The Good Sex Guide is, hasn't put anyone in hospital. It's not going to damage your health. On the contrary, you know, it's good for your health. Before The Good Sex Guide, Margie Clark was an established British movie actress. She hopes the show will get her noticed by Hollywood.